Hi, I'm Billy of the Fuji Guys. I'm here to show you some of the top features on our A series, uh, JX series, JZ series, and T series. These cameras carry similar features and functionalities, and so the actual controls of them are very similar. Uh, there are some minor differences in the two, uh, where the AX camera will actually have uh, the movie mode in the menu, where these actually have dedicated video buttons. But aside from that, most of the functionalities are the same. So let's take a look at some of the cool features that these cameras can do. This is sort of the top features video for basically the A series, the JX, JZ, T series. Both all these cameras are pretty much similar in terms of control feature functionalities. Some of them run off AA batteries, some of them offer five times, eight times, and even a 12 times zoom. But the majority of them have basically the same feature function sets, including controls. So I have here with me just a JX one, which is a, sorry, JZ, which is an eight times zoom. Uh, in red, but again, depending on the country, it's going to come in various colors. Uh, so this is just a quick look at some of the features found on these cameras. So the motion panoramic is a cool feature to show off uh, if you want to do some stitching on, on the camera. You go into the menu, select the shooting mode, and you scroll down until you see the uh, panoramic feature. And once you see that again, uh, it allows you basically to pan the image left to right. Uh, you can also change the angle so it's 120 degrees, 180, 360. I'm going to show you it at 120 degrees. And of course, you can also change your direction from left to right, right to left, up, down, down, up. And if you change it for go, to go up and down, you can actually rotate the camera and do the panoramic this way instead. And as you do the panoramic, you're actually going to get higher resolution when you do that. So here's a quick, quick example of that, uh, of that uh, panoramic uh, look to the image. And of course, you can do it naturally uh, on its own. If you just change the directions back to left to right, you can see that, can, that you can easily do that as well. So I just want to show you the difference between the two. Uh, doing this way, you have less resolution. Doing the opposite way, you have more resolution. It's a bigger file uh, just to take a look at, OK? And on the A-series cameras, the panoramic mode is slightly different. You go into the mode, same thing. This is where you would pick the uh, panoramic feature. But instead of a 360 panoramic, it's basically a three-stitch panoramic. So you take one first photo, and it's going to have sort of a, a plus and a circular plus, and you line that up automatically, and it takes a second shot for you. And then you do it again for the third shot, and it takes a shot without you having to push a shutter button. It then stitches it within the camera. So the panoramic modes are slightly different, but uh, pretty much uh, similar in, in features. They're pretty simple to use. I actually like this three-stitch one because it takes three high-quality photos and stitches it together to give you that effect, as you can see right there. It's kind of cool to see. So look at the uh, HD video functionality on this camera. Uh, some of the cameras you have to go into the shooting modes in order to turn the HD mode on. In this particular camera, this one has a dedicated HD recording button. Uh, the A series does not have one, so you would have to go into the menu to select the movie mode. And some of the other cameras have a dedicated one in the back, as you can see. This one just seems to be on the top. You uh, push it to start the recording, and again you push it again to stop the recording, which is nice and convenient. On the A-series model, uh, you would actually go into the menu and then look for that video functionality right there. Set it up, and then you can start your video. And of course, you stop your video as well. And playing back the video is pretty similar. It looks like a film strip. You push down on the directional pad, and then you can play it back. There's a speaker uh, built into the camera as well as a microphone. This one actually has a stereo mic. Some of them are just a mono mic, as you can see. Uh, this JZ series is just a little bit special because it uses a CMOS sensor, where uh, these other ones here use sort of the, uh, the standard uh, CCD sensor. So this one offers, you know, full HD video, where these offers uh, HD. Whether it's an H series, J series, T series, uh, none of them have mode dials on them, as you can see. Uh, they do have some dedicated recording button to start and stop the recording. However, when it comes to different shooting modes, you have to go into the menu. And then from there, you select from the shooting modes the various options from automatic, program. There's a pro low light mode that takes multiple shots and gives you cleaner images. An HDR mode, a natural light and flash mode that basically takes two shots, one with flash, one without flash. And it saves both, and you decide which one you want later. It's a nice feature to do. Uh, there's also other shooting, like portrait, landscape. 
Uh, there's even these uh, advanced filter features where you can do these cool effects like, like toy camera, a miniature effect that kind of blows the top and bottom. There's even a, you know, a cross a screen filter that kind of gives you sort of a, you know, a, a cross screen as if you're using one of those filter effects. Uh, it's kind of cool. Let me show you if, if I can see it on a shiny area of the, of the camera. And uh, I'm just going to play that back for you. It might have been a little too close, and uh, we'll see how that effect worked. And uh, in this instance here, it was kind of out of focus, but you can see it created that cross screen effect, uh, as you can see there. In addition to that, of course, you also have um, um, other advanced features, uh, advanced filter features as well. So going back to advanced filters, you have isolated colors. You can show red only, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, purple. And I'm going to have a yellow camera out just to show you uh, how it isolates the color. As you can see there, um, only the yellow appears and everything else is kind of in a monochromatic image and it's going to process that file and I play it back and you can see everything else is monochrome and then you got the yellow. That's kind of cool. So that's basically some of the shooting modes. It's through the menu on this camera. There's really a lot of features you want to check out on it. Uh, there's a night mode, uh, even a text mode. There's even a 3D mode that allows you to take two shots. One shot like that and then you'd kind of move over to the left, shoot the next shot and then it creates this 3D MPO file which you then can you know, view it on the TV that supports 3D or um, you know, play it back on our 3D camera. If you play it back on the camera, it's going to flicker between the image to give you that effect. It's not the best. You want to look at it on you know, a computer that supports 3D uh, in order to see that, okay? Now, A, J, T, Z, uh, they, they are very simple, basic point-and-shoot cameras with a lot of uh, cool features to them. Uh, one thing that's true with them is that they all have this SR auto mode that will determine the scene that you're shooting at, whether it's a macro shot, it's going to know that, whether it's a portrait shot, it's going to switch it to a portrait setting if it detects a face so that you can get better skin tones uh, when you take that shot. And again, if you're doing close-up shots, it will switch it to a macro mode so that you don't have to turn on macro yourself. So as you can see here, it's turning, turning it to a macro function so that it can get the proper focusing. And uh, the macro feature is actually kind of nice because uh, when you zoom in, it's quite sharp uh, on this camera, as you can see right there, very, very detailed. And it's a cool little feature to have um, with this SR Auto if you want it to have it very simple. But you can go in the menu, you can change it to the other different shooting options uh, that, that are available. Let me show you this Pro Low Light mode. It basically takes uh, uh, several shots and it merges it together and, and cleans out the noise. So when you're shooting in low light situations and um, you have to shoot with higher ISO, this mode is actually going to give you a cleaner picture than if you were just to shoot in a single automatic mode and bump the ISO up yourself. This would actually give you a much nicer. There's even an HDR mode here that does similar to it. It takes multiple shots and determines scenes of high contrast and uh, try to hold, it tries to hold the detail in the highlights and in the shadow area so that you, you still get to even exposure throughout and even detail throughout the image. There we go. We have some great features on these cameras. They don't break the budget, but also take some incredible pictures as well as gives you some good features and functionalities. Again, if you want to learn more about these cameras, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Until then, I'm Billy, one of the Fuji guys.